For this FRQ, a calculator is not permitted. It says the graph of the polar curve r equals 1 minus 2 cosine of theta for theta between 0 and pi is shown over here. Let s be the shaded region in the third quadrant, so that's right here, bounded by the curve and the x-axis. Part a says write an integral expression for the area of s. So we have the curve r equals 1 minus 2 cosine theta, and that's drawn right here. And so you'll notice that first, when theta is equal to zero, I just want to verify where the curve begins. I'm guessing it begins right here, but let's just verify that. So we're going to take zero and plug it in for theta, and cosine of zero is one. So we get one minus two times one, and that's going to make negative one. So again, when theta is equal to zero, we get r equals negative one. So that means when you're plotting that point, you're starting at zero, but then you go out negative one, which reflects it back over here. And also it says the polar curve is defined from zero to pi. So this curve is drawn out between zero and pi. So you can think of it as we start at zero and the point of the curve starts here at negative one. Then what's happening as we rotate this angle up, since the curve is down here, that means that our values are gonna continue to be negative, creating this part of the curve. So we want to find out at what angle do we keep rotating for which this curve comes back to a length of zero. So to find that, we're going to plug in 0 for r and solve for theta. So we get 0 equals 1 minus 2 cosine theta. I'm going to add this term to the left side and then divide both sides by 2. So now we ask ourselves cosine of what angle is equal to 1 half. So in this first quadrant, that will occur when theta is equal to pi over 3. So that means to find the area of s, we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 3. And remember, for a polar curve, when you're finding the area, the formula is the integral of 1 half r squared. So I move the 1 half to the front of the integral. And for our polar curve, r equals 1 minus 2 cosine theta. So I have that plugged in right here. And then you take that r value and square it. So here's the integral expression for the area of s. Part b says write expressions for dx d theta and dy d theta in terms of theta. So remember for polar curves, we have these equations that relate the variables. We have x equals r times cosine theta and y equals r times sine theta. Next, we're going to plug in the polar curve for r. So we're going to substitute 1 minus 2 cosine theta in for r. So we have x equals, and then instead of r, we have 1 minus 2 cosine theta times by cosine theta. We're going to do the same thing for y. So we have y equals, and we're going to substitute r, which is 1 minus 2 cosine theta and then we times that by sine of theta. Now we need to find dx d theta, so that means we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to theta. So in order to take the derivative of this, since we have theta that shows up more than once, we're going to use the product rule. The derivative of 1 is 0. For this term, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we multiply negative 2 times negative sine, and you get positive 2 sine theta. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so for dx d theta, we multiply these, and then we add the product of these. So 1 minus 2 cosine theta times negative sine theta, we get negative sine theta, 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then we're going to add the product of these. And then finally, we're going to take these two terms and combine them. So we get 4 sine theta cosine theta, and then we're going to drop this term down minus sine theta. So there's our final answer for dx d theta. Now to find dy d theta, we're going to do the same thing because we have a product both involving theta. We're going to use the product rule. Again, the derivative of 1 minus 2 cosine theta is going to be 2 sine theta, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So we take the product of these, and then we add the product of these. So we take this cosine theta, and we're going to distribute it to the 1 and to the negative 2 cosine theta, and then we add the product of these. So here's our final answer for dy d theta. Part C says write an equation in terms of x and y for the line tangent to the graph of the polar curve at the point where theta equals pi over 2. Show computations that lead to your answer. So to write the equation for a line tangent to the graph, we need a point and slope. So to find the point, we're going to take theta, which equals pi over 2, and plug it into the equations we just wrote for x and y. So we have theta is equal to pi over 2, and we're going to plug that into our equation for x. So here's the equation we have for x with respect to theta. We're going to plug in pi over 2 here and here. So we have 1 minus 2 times cosine of pi over 2, and then this whole thing is times by cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so we end up getting 0 for x. We're going to do the same thing for y. 
So here's our equation for y. We have y equals 1 minus 2 cosine theta times sine of theta, and we're going to plug in pi over 2 for theta. Again, right here, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this first term is just going to become 1, and sine of pi over 2 is also 1. So we end up getting that y is equal to 1. So our coordinate point is going to be 0, comma, 1. Next, we need to find slope. So dy dx is our slope, and we're going to rewrite that as dy d theta over dx d theta. And remember, we just found expressions for these in part b, so I'm going to rewrite them here and here. So we took this dy d theta and substituted it in the numerator, and then we took this dx d theta and put it in the denominator. And now we're going to plug in pi over 2 for theta. So everywhere we have a theta, we're going to substitute pi over 2. All right, so we have everything plugged in. And now cosine of pi over 2 again is 0. So this works out great. That just simplified this a lot. So now we have sine of pi over 2 is 1, and that's here and here. So we end up getting negative 2. So to write the equation of the tangent line to the polar curve at the point where theta is equal to pi over 2, we're going to use point slope form. So we're going to go y minus y1 equals slope times the quantity x minus x1. So we end up getting y minus 1 equals negative 2x. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching.